Well, there are two things most American journalists universally believed going into the primary season. One, Donald Trump had no chance of winning the nomination, let alone the presidency. And two, that Hillary Clinton was a shoe in for all of it. But those assumptions seem to be on shaky ground now. Back in March, Jake Novak of CNBC correctly predicted that Trump would be the GOP nominee, but said that would be the end of the line. Now he's going where few other American journalists have gone before with a story headlined, I was wrong. Trump will be the next president. Jake Novak joins me now from his home in Long Island, New York. Welcome, Jake. That is quite a change in opinion. What, what made you change your mind? Well, first of all, I looked at the poll numbers. You know, mathematics is mathematics. And the poll numbers continue to be very strong for Donald Trump. And while everyone who, when they presumably start to win the nomination, gets a little bit of a bump in the polls, Donald Trump is not only getting that bump, but he's getting it earlier than usual. And most importantly, Hillary Clinton's numbers are getting weaker and weaker. Not only her overall numbers, but the, the favorability rating, which should have really leveled off by now for Hillary Clinton. It seems to only be getting worse. And now, in some polls, is actually higher than unfavorable rating, is actually higher than Donald Trump's. So if the math is in his favor, why are so few American journalists willing to say it looks like Trump's going to win? Because everything that we've been taught, uh, in not, not, not as journalists, but as politically, and what we've seen historically, tells us that somebody like him, who says the things he says, who attacks his own base so very often, cannot win. But I think that the time has passed now for us to continue to be in that denial. We've seen what he did in the primaries. We're seeing what he's doing in the general election polls. It's time to stop thinking at what we've always thought and, and start to realize that what he's doing now is shaking up what all the rules were in the past. And he's doing it. And like I said, he is attacking his own base. And yet his, the base of the Republican Party is starting to support him in the 90 percent level. I'm sure that by July in the convention, it'll be back to the 95 percent level that nominees usually have. Well, you're referencing this unconventional way he's run this campaign and everything, despite common sense, is working, again, uh, working in his favor. What do you make of this political spectacle? Well, this is a reality show campaign. You have to understand something. Donald Trump has been involved in reality TV, the, the best reality TV in this country as far as the way it's produced, for more than 15 years. And what reality shows do the very, very best is they make what has been very weighed strategized and considered look like it's off the cuff, look like it's completely unrehearsed. It's very rehearsed. It's very staged. It's very, very calculated. So when Donald Trump starts talking, it might, might drive you crazy. You might hate everything he says. But what he's winning, the where, he, where he is winning, folks, is that he's making it. you feel like you know him. You feel like, well, you know what, I don't agree with him, or maybe you do. But this is the real Donald Trump talking. This is the real Donald Trump on his Twitter feed. And it may or may not be, but he has won a tremendous victory of marketing and messaging because he's given you a brand and you've accepted that as his brand. And that's a big reason why he is starting to win, because there's nothing better than a clear message in politics. We all know Donald Trump's slogan. Let's say it together. Make America great again. Can you tell me what Hillary Clinton's slogan is? I'm really not sure what it is. And she's been in politics for 24 years, or at least national politics for 24 years. We talk about this branding, but Donald Trump's branding has been under attack recently. They've talked about these alleged dealings with the mafia, the whole controversy around Trump University, all of those things. What impact are any of those sorts of stories having? Well, you just mentioned Muhammad Ali in your previous report. And as a boxer, one of the brilliant things Muhammad Ali used to do was something called the rope a dope. He would go up against the ropes, protect his head, and his opponent just couldn't help punching him in the, in a, with body blows over and over again. It was just too big a target. Ali was doing was strategizing really, really well there. He was basically tiring his opponent out. And after being on the ropes for a few moments or even a minute or so, he would come off the ropes, his opponent was exhausted, and then Ali would come in for the, for the kill blow. So every time the news media or Hillary Clinton goes after him for every little thing, whether it's Trump University or some other comment that he's made, there's two mistakes that she's making. First of all, she's repeating his message over and over again. If you take a look at Donald Trump's Twitter feed, it's all about Donald Trump. If you take a look at Hillary Clinton's Twitter feed, it's also all about Donald Trump. And, and if you are, hadn't heard the message yet, you're hearing it again. And what it's doing is it's also like a very much reality shows do. Reality shows are very, very good at letting you know who the villain is very, very quickly, either with the way that they play the music or they stage the shot. And Donald Trump says, hey, they're going to attack me for all these things. And then walking right into a trap, Hillary Clinton and the media do exactly what he said they were going to do. And it makes it look like he really knows what's going on. And if you're an undecided voter who hasn't voted the last few elections, this guy is really speaking to you. Wow, good analysis. Thank you so much, Jake.
My pleasure. Jake Novak of CNBC joining us from Long Island, New York.